Hi, this is Shadi and welcome to the first ever episode of Japanese Jiu Jitsu style or school. So I figured this is a very important series to make and dive into because I've talked a lot about historical figures like Yushijima, Kimura, Mifune, Maeda, Tanabe, etc. All about, you know, their Jiu Jitsu schools and their groundwork and how it preceded the stuff that we see in the 20th century and how it is the basis for the stuff we see today and where it did come from and try to shed some light on how these figures interacted with each other and how we have judo and how we have everything today but I feel like we can go even deeper down uh, the rabbit hole of uh, jiu-jitsu and see and explore the different styles and maybe perhaps have one style per episode and that way we can truly understand the Japanese jiu-jitsu and because let's face it we use it as a very loose term just simply to state that it is the art that preceded uh, judo and aikido etc but it is important to differentiate between the styles and the schools uh, the specialties of each one where did it come from how it uh, influenced today's arts etc so I figured the best way to start is with the most famous style and one of the most influential in today's modern martial arts like Aikido and Judo and that is the Kito Ryu Jiu Jitsu. So as you can see here uh, Kito Ryu uh, looks a lot like Aikido um, but believe it or not it has a lot of influence to Judo as well. So let's talk a little bit about it. So Kito Ryu is a traditional school of Jiu Jitsu or Koryu. Um, it is a syllabus uh, mainly of Atemiwaza striking now we all know that when we say striking in jiu-jitsu we talk about the basics um, it's not like a boxer who just hammers down the bag or like a muay thai who just kicks bamboo and until he breaks them with their shins we all know that jiu-jitsu uh, style striking is mainly the basis and a way to pave into the throwing or the locks similar to what uh, Kron gracie's philosophy is or um, Hoist Gracie says like I use the boxing to get into my Jiu Jitsu and this is how they used to do it in the past so Atemiwaza uh, was the starting point mainly to the grappling so it wasn't like, a very advanced or solely based striking art so we have Atemiwaza striking techniques Nagewaza throwing techniques and takedowns Kansetsu Waza joint locks and Shinoaza choking techniques. So this style is mainly uh, throws, sweeps, and it is it was before designed to do with full armor, you know, in the age of samurai, before the invention of the judo gi or, you know, uh, keiko gi or training uh, wear. So it is, when we see throws and sweep, we can think automatically of judo so and locks and uh, chokes. So uh, let's see more of the origins. It was founded by Fukuno and Terada. It was believed that Fukuno passed it on to Terada and it kept on evolving from there. Um, it was in the early Edo period that it was founded. So this, we are talking 17th century, uh, of course, in Japan. So the Kitoriyu translates to rise and fall, but in other uh, translations I was reading a French article it says you know right of the rise and autumn so I'm not sure if rise and fall literally of physically rising and falling or um, the sunrise and autumn you know as the sun sets so I don't know there's a lot of uh, ter uh, terminology mix up here but if you do have some uh, more infos please feel free to share it down below so it is included the principle of key energy and also uh, teaches when two minds are united the stronger controls the weaker so the philosophy is the collision of two minds and the stronger controls the weaker now if you look closely it says minds not energy or strength or bodies so it is talking about uh, it goes beyond the physical so it is kind of like 
when Aikido and Judo talk about when someone gives you a lot of strength but you are you know more strategic and more well positioned you can actually turn it against them for some for example someone just launching at you you can counter them with a seo inage or in aikido you can counter them with a, uh, a kaitenage for example so it talks about uh, the mind controls the weaker meaning that um it is a flow of energy and also based on technique and leverage and not solely on strength they have also the kuzushi uh, the breaking of the balance you see in judo when you are doing uchikomi uh, whenever you are drilling a specific technique you can see them lifting with the sleeve and the lapel till the opponent or the partner is on the tip of their toes so this is here we can see one of the roots of judo is in kito ryu so uh, let's talk a little bit more about judo so jigoro kano trained a little bit of kito ryu and also tenshin shinyu ryu jiu jitsu as i've mentioned before and uh, this is where he started to extract the basis of judo and the uh, kata that I've shown many times in my uh, footage where, that I display when I'm narrating uh, Jigoro Kano doing uh, the Juno kata and also the Koshiki no kata. The Koshiki no kata, uh, where he was doing it with Yamashita, was actually based in Kito Ryu. We see it uh, at the beginning of the video um, and here as well. So you can see that uh, it is a very uh, strong predecessor to uh, Judo. And Jigoro Kano took a lot of uh, inspiration from different styles, and we will explore them in se se several, excuse me, uh, episodes while we are exploring several styles of jujitsu. So you can see here that um, the softness uh, of the styles, and also you can see that the basis of Aikido, the Sukumen Iriminage. You can see the hakama, the wear. So this style is very prevalent and very popular and very uh, uh, influential in the 20th century arts, like I said, judo and aikido. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this first uh, episode. Please, if you have another uh, information regarding this style or maybe, for example, a story or an anecdote that happened between two schools, uh, let me know down below. And this was Shadi.